I'm Robert with Nomium, and we're taking a look at mural whiteboards, which can be found at mural.co. Mural whiteboards are great to use with collaborative teams, whether we're working virtually only on a mural whiteboard, or if we're using them in conjunction with a virtual session, for example, a Zoom session. We can give people a link to edit our mural whiteboard, and our collaborators and participants do not need a Mural account and they do not need to log in. Mural is a paid service. They do have a free trial, but to take advantage of the long-term features, it is about 12 US dollars a month if you pay annually, but that allows you to bring in up to 50 collaborators who can be part of your team and edit different mural whiteboards. So this video is going to look at creating different mural whiteboards, including templates and starting from scratch. We'll take a look at adding content, editing content, and finally some other share and collaboration items. So let's get started. I do have a couple of rooms within my own account. This is demo murals I've created simply for this video, but I might have sales murals, negotiation murals, uh, interactive murals, personal murals, and I can keep those separated and we'll see what those look like in just a moment when we have different ones saved. So let's go to create a new mural. And although we can start with a blank one, we're gonna hold off on that and take a look at all of these different templates. These templates have names and they also have some descriptions of how they might be useful. So I love building my own templates, but often, especially in Mural, I can find the template that I need and maybe edit it a little bit, and it saves me a lot of time. Let's go here to the category brainstorm, and we'll go to this creative matrix, and we'll create this Mural. Now, not only does it give me this entire template, which I can, again, edit as much as I want. If we take a look at the right side of the screen, it gives us some recommendations. So if we're facilitating a session live or we're just allowing collaborators to come and go on their own time, it gives us some recommendations and instructions. We can follow these or not. We can close it out at any time. We might want to give this, uh, instead of this creative matrix title, I might want to go in and, and edit this. I can define my, my audience and what that means is if we zoom in here, we might have a category related to people. So I'm gonna go over here to my text options and we will look at these text options a, a little bit more. I just wanna show what we might do with this specific whiteboard we might have what managers can do. Okay. Then it says define these other categories. And if we again, if we zoom in here, we can see category for enabling solutions. So what is something managers or other categories might be able to do? This category might be reduce costs. Now I'm putting that here as a title. At any time, we could go in here to the sticky notes and we could type them there as well. Again, we have complete flexibility of how we label and edit these templates. Then we go through a brainstorming session. Again, we're following the outline instructions. It even gives us a recommended time of 15 minutes. So here we might have individuals come in, maybe adding their own sticky note of how they think managers could reduce cost. Stop buying soda. Maybe that's an issue in our company break room and different collaborators can come in and put different sticky notes and different ideas here. We also have a suggestion for wild cards, ideas that don't fit within the categories that we've created. So that is just a basic template and we recommend exploring those. I'll go ahead and give this a title template example. Great. Now let's go back to our room. You'll see here that I have a template example. I can go back into that 
and start editing that at any time. Or if I've given out a link for collaboration, I can go back and see what other people have done. I have some options here. I can duplicate it, move it to other rooms, archive it, rename it, delete it. I love having a template that I've edited or created myself. I duplicate that. I might call that template example two. And the reason I might do that is if I have three different teams and I want them all to brainstorm separately as teams, then I have example one, example two, example three, and I give out those different links so the different groups are not editing or overlapping each other's work. This works really well with Zoom breakout rooms or other programs breakout rooms where breakout room number one has 15 minutes to brainstorm and collaborate and they get their specific whiteboard. Breakout room number two gets their specific whiteboard. But we're gonna go here to create a new mural and this time we're going to start from scratch. And this is where we'll take a little more of a careful look into how we can add and edit content. First, we already saw quickly some of these text options. Here, this is a title. I can move that anywhere I want. I can also increase the font. I can change the color of the font. Uh, I can use different font styles as well as alignment and other text options that you're probably used to from your own word processing systems. Text boxes are great. It's usually smaller, but it will keep it more constrained within a text box. And again, we can go in here, we can change the different style of font that we're using as well as any of the colors and the shapes. Now, comments are not meant to be text boxes that will remain on the canvas. These are things that we would like to say either to ourselves, this is great, and my name shows up there, or if I have a team of 10 people, other people can add these comments as we create these whiteboards. When we have a final whiteboard, we want to save it, we want to share it, I can go in here and I can edit or even delete my comments uh, so they don't appear later on. Sticky notes are always great. We have different colors. We can drag those over or we can click one and it'll just appear in the middle. Now, watch what happens when I want to type something and it has a lot of text. So that font size gets really small. Of course, I could increase this and the text will grow with it. I can decrease this font, but there is a maximum to increasing it to keep it constrained within that sticky note. Now keep in mind at any time, instead of making this larger, I can simply zoom in or zoom out. Aside from some of these basic formatting tools, if I do a right click, I can make a link to this specific sticky note, which is helpful if I have a lot of things happening on a whiteboard. I can send this to the front or to the back. So in this case, if things need to overlap, you can see it's hiding now behind some of the other icons. Uh, I can also lock this. Now, this is great if I want this to remain unchanged. I can lock it and allow any of my collaborators to unlock it and move it. Here, unlock that. Or if I'm the facilitator and I own this board, I can lock this where only I can unlock it, which is wonderful, especially if we're not sure how well we trust some of our other participants, uh, if, it's a, if it's a team we're unfamiliar with, or even if we trust them and they're just unfamiliar with Mural, and we want to be sure 
that their exploration does not change any of the formattings or templates that we have set up. Uh, we should probably, now that we have a few text and sticky notes here, let's take a quick look at our view options and then we'll go back to some of our other tools. I'm using a trackpad. I can zoom in, zoom out, and move things around anytime with my trackpad. But if I go to the bottom right hand corner, I can switch from trackpad option and to mouse option. I can also go in here, pinch to zoom, two fingers to swipe, or in mouse mode, it gives me these different options. Uh, and at any time, if I would like to zoom in or zoom out using this function at the bottom right hand corner, the other thing I can do is if you if you take a look and see this pink box, this pink box, I'm moving around the entire huge canvas. But when I want to go over content, I know it's probably hard to see on the screen. You'll notice where I'm zooming over the content, it will lead me there. So let me just show you what this entire whiteboard looks like right now. There is a lot of space we haven't even used. And what happens if, if I'm using this view box in the bottom right hand corner, I can easily go hover over the content section and that brings it into full view. So now let's find a clean area. We'll just go down a little bit. We'll take a quick look at uh, shapes here. If I want to have a circle, I can type in the circle. And of course, I can change my font at any time. And if I'd like to change the border colors of my shapes, I can do that. The size, I can also make them dotted lines. We'll go ahead, we'll also add a triangle here, just as an example. Now, whether you have a text box or whether you have a shape, you can also use these connectors. So I'm gonna have one connector here in this circle and one connector here in this triangle. Now that somehow it's showing that there's a relationship. Of course, I could add some text here to say what the relationship is, but here's a cool feature. If I wanna keep these connected, Oops, I don't want to add text there. I just want to move this around. Notice that that connector line moves around with it. So I can decide where these icons should be later. And if I have connected them, those connections do stay. Icons are great. Mural is a paid account and they have icons from the noun project they say they have about a million of them that come with the Mural account. The Noun Project is a standalone service that you can subscribe to to get icons, but if you are using Mural, you don't have to have a Noun Project account. Maybe I want speech bubbles. Again, I can move those around, make those different sizes, and I can change the colors. And at any time, I can go and add text over that if I'd like. I can also just drag and drop things instead of clicking on it and having it appear. And since there's a million of these, if I would like a dog, a German Shepherd that's pink for whatever reason, I can add those. Whether it's a text box or any shape or icon, I can copy and paste that as many times as I want to create more and more German Shepherds. And if I right click, I can also duplicate that if I don't want to use the traditional uh, control C, control V. If I'd like to group things, I simply highlight them and I move those all together. And even if I resize them, it keeps them at a similar ratio as when we started. So when the size increases, the space between them also increases. Going down to another clean area, we have what I like to call miniature uh, templates. They call these frameworks. Here, if I want a three by three grid, I can add that. And of course, that was a really, really big three by three grid. 
I'd like to resize that. A little bit of it even went off the canvas. No problem. I can manipulate and change that anytime I want. I can go up here to my formatting tools, uh, changing the, the border size, uh, the different font size. I can rename this. And in that case, it did not do the auto formatting, no problem there. I can add things in each box. In this case, if I double click, it's going to be the sticky note that I used previously. So I was on the circle green sticky note. And if I want to go back here to different titles or different fonts, I can add those anywhere I want. Adding other things, we can add first images. Now it comes with a lot of different images. So if I don't want an icon of a dog, but I want an actual dog, I can add that at any time, resizing that at any time. I can also import my images. This is also how we would import files from a computer, from OneDrive, from Dropbox. Keep in mind, if you're using OneDrive or Dropbox, you will need to be logged in. I've got here a simple company logo. And as always, moving it around. And if I need to, I can resize that. Other files we can add are PPT files as well as PDF files. When you add a PDF or a PowerPoint, it will require you to open it in the program or in another browser, depending on what type of file that is. Another great thing we can do is if I have a link to a video, I can simply go anywhere on the mural canvas I can add that link, and this is a YouTube link, and when I double click that, it's going to allow me to play that on the screen, or again, open it in a new browser tab. I can also change the thumbnail, uh, and I can decide if I want to delete uh, the YouTube description that I had in that YouTube link. The final thing to look at with adding content is drawing. We click the draw function. We have at the top of the screen, different widths, the eraser, and of course we have the different colors that we might want to use on the screen. When we're drawing, it does do some auto adjusting. If I type my name, I've had this actually change things where it thought I was drawing an E and it turned it into an R or something else. This time it, it, it worked out and once we're done drawing, I can go back in here and I can move that around. Now, we've talked about adding content, editing the content, and also our zoom and view. Let's take a look at a couple of other things that Mural allows us to do. It allows us to vote. When we have other collaborators, and I want people to vote on different ideas. For example, if we had a brainstorming session, I can let people choose their top three options that they'd like to discuss next. I can also use a timer on the board. And when I share, this is one of the great things I mentioned earlier, I can invite people that I'm already connected with or I can invite them over email. But what I like to do is, because most of my participants in my sessions don't have a mural account, or I don't know if they have a mural account, I can allow anyone with the link, no sign up required to edit or just view, but I'm gonna allow them to edit. I'm gonna copy that link. And now when I send that link to them, they can go in to this exact whiteboard. They can edit it. The only thing they can't do is change things that I've locked. We can export this as PDF, PNG, zip files. We can embed this uh, and we can also in live collaborations have chat. We already took a look at comments. We can see the activity log of, of who has edited and made changes. We can view an outline. We haven't created an outline or we don't have an outline with a template, but that option is there. Uh, we can find things and at any time we can go to the help function, which is reading articles or watching some of the mural videos.
I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, we would love to hear from you.